All right, this week we've got our first week of the nervous system. We've talked about it some already with a type of cell signaling, um, but we're gonna go into a lot more detail. This week, we're gonna talk about the basic job, um, contrasting it again to the endocrine system, but going back to our control systems um, and the ways of classifying the different components. So sensory and motor, efferent, efferent, somatic, autonomic, lots of fun terms. Then we're gonna talk about nervous tissue. You've seen this in lab, um, neurons, and then some of the neuroglia that are present. Um, a little bit more about, or is it divisions, um, myelin sheath. And that's, that's actually, I think, it for this week. Next week, we will go into action potential, resting membrane potential. So that's gonna be a big topic. Um, so keep caught up with this week. This is the first half of your chapter, just about. Um, and the second half is quite a bit of information related to changes in electrical impulses um, and then neurotransmitter release in the receptors. So stay caught up this week. Um, we then will get into different components of the nervous system in terms of somatic, autonomic. Those are all separate chapters. Um, nervous system, potential nervous system anatomy in more detail. So this week really is an overview um, and we're gonna see a lot of it again. So I wanna start with reminding you of what we've talked about in week one, uh, week two, both, <laughs> the endocrine system and the nervous system. So hopefully you can tell which is which here. The endocrine system is made up of endocrine glands, but also really anything that makes hormones. So hormones can be made in the skin, in the, um, like other places, um, hormones, kidney. So here are some of the major endocrine glands um, and they are that because their job is primarily to produce hormones. You already know the pancreas has another job too. It also produces digestive enzymes, um, but it has such a big endocrine function that it's considered an endocrine organ. Also is a digestive organ. So these hormones, right, these are defined by the fact that they travel in the bloodstream. They are chemical messengers, right? So hormones are a type of chemical messenger. And so these have widespread signals that are going to travel throughout the body, typically, and have a effect wherever there's a receptor for that hormone. Widespread, slower, long-term effects compared to the nervous system. The nervous system is the brain. It's all listed right here. I don't need to write it again. <laughs> We've got the brain, the spinal cord, and the peripheral nerves. There are also peripheral nerves that come from the brain. They're not really shown here. They're cranial nerves, a type of peripheral nerve. We'll come back to more detail of the nervous system, of course. So this system involves excitable cells, which we've talked about in the muscle chapter. So excitable, just like muscle tissue. And this is going to be um, local or directed communication via action potentials that then allow for synaptic communication. So there is a neuron, um, let's draw a cell body right here. It has an axon that goes out, let's just keep going all the way to the fingertip. And there is the end of that axon. This is where there's going to be a synapse. So the communication is inside this neuron, um, localized in this case to the fingertip, very fast. And we've talked about um, differences, different types of responses of these two systems. Actually, we're gonna do that in just a second. Last thing on this slide I wanna say is what's released from the synapse is the neurotransmitter. This is the chemical messenger of the, what's this thing called? Nervous system. And you know this, right? So review, reviewing this chemical messengers here are are two categories. 
how something, whether something is a neurotransmitter or a hormone, just depends on which system it's being released into. The chemical messenger could be the same molecule. Histamine, for example. Okay. Um, so here is that muscle tissue potentially where the synapses causing contraction versus a, let me draw this here. Um, here's the adrenal glands. There might be a blood vessel. There is a blood vessel going past the adrenal gland. That's how a hormone is gonna travel into the bloodstream and then throughout the entire circulation. So recalling this information, please do your first learning check, um, which is thing, something you've seen before. Um, boom, here it is. Pause the video to answer these. There is one I want to note here. Um, well, yeah, I think just, just one. So there are three here that are somewhat related. Regulation of blood pressure, when you stand up, that needs to happen quick. This is going to be the nervous system and it's going to be um, actually what's called the baroreceptor bar reflex that initiates this. Sweating during a workout, that's also the nervous system. That needs to happen fairly quickly. Um, temperature is sensed by your hypothalamus and turns on sweat glands. However, regulation of blood pressure after sweating. Now what, this is like combining these two, but it's not really. In this case, the stimulus is heat, too hot. In this case, the stimulus is low blood pressure. And that's detected um, like centrally by these special receptors that detect that. In this case, our stimulus is what? Blood pressure, again. So our bodies sweat in order to compensate for being hot, but that call, cause dysregulation of another system, body water, right? So fluid was lost and that caused this stimulus, blood, pre blood pressure, decreased blood pressure due to decreased volume due to sweating that was initiated by the nervous system. This endocrine response um, is, is slower and is endocrine. It's, it, the endocrine system is not regulating sweating. What's the response of this is to retain water. Does that make sense? Because we want, we've lost water. Our stimulus is decreased blood pressure. Our response is gonna to be to keep water and therefore increase blood pressure. It's not going to regulate sweating. 